you you are not done with us we just want to yield to you holy spirit you are our teacher your guide you are our standby you are everything holy ghost how much we appreciate your presence we want to to swim and dying in your presence thank you for your word in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen we can take our seats in the presence of god uh, i greet you in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen uh, we had a wonderful time last night sometimes when you have times like those ones you, you, you don't like to go because those times I call them expensive it's expensive to have <laughs> it doesn't come easy so when it happens you want just to be there and get all that you can this morning I want to share something we didn't finish about the tools. Say to remember we did not finish about the tools. But I, I feel I need to share something this morning and then by the grace of God we will see if we can touch other tools later. So this morning I want to talk about the qualities of a leader. The qualities quality 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 there's no one who does not want quality quality is quality you can't do anything to substitute quality the qualities of a leader or maybe you can call it the qualifications whichever dimension you want to call it but we want to encourage each other on the aspect of quality quality someone said your charisma calls people while your character will either keep them or chase them away I'll, I'll repeat that your charisma will call people a lot of them while your character or my character will chase them or keep them i'm sure we have experienced some of these things where you hear so and so is a friend to so and so but in a short space of time the friendship is gone the other one cannot cope up with the other one anymore because the closer you come to the other one the closer you see who they really are amen so we need to we need god to help us to raise leaders who are going to stand the test of time. Leaders who will stand the test of time. I, I saw amongst the banks during the time, there was a time where there was a strong shaking on the banking sector in this nation. Very, very strong. And then POSB came up with a motto that was said we stood the test of time <laughs> POSB will still remain POSB it will still be there <laughs> how many of you saw that you see that's there I don't know if it's still their motto now but they say we stood the test of time we, 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 we pray that God in this ministry and in the church of Jesus Christ will raise leaders that will stand the test of time 
And leaders who stand the test of, test of time are leaders of quality. They've got qualities. So there is a need to balance. So there is a need to balance. So when we talk of character, I mean when we talk of character and charisma, so they also say character is who you are when you are in the dark. You can, you can write that. Character is who you are when you are in the dark. And the dark thing, the dark of it, is, is not maybe dark, dark, just there's no, there's absence of light. If, if I leave Zimbabwe and go to China today, suddenly it becomes my dark. Because I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if I'll bump into someone who knows me. So already I have a feeling I'm in dark so I can do my best in those things that I may not do amongst the people who know me. So then there your character will begin to be revealed. Do you see that? So character is who you are, who I am, when I am in the dark. You know, people act very funny when they get into dark places. They, there is a lot of drama. People, people are interesting. But we are saying, may God have mercy. And that we will have leaders that have are leaders of a very strong character, strong biblical character. Amen. So charisma is, we are talking about our giftedness. When we talk of charisma, that's our giftedness. Those are the things that we do. The things that we do. Preaching. The works of power. Singing. Someone can sing and, 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 and the glory can fall. Someone can preach and signs wonders and miracles manifest but sometimes it's important for us to say after that what happens i read a certain book by toza there is a chapter that he says when you worship god on sunday what do you do on monday well, you worship god on sunday you are lifting your hands, you are worshiping, you are flowing. You see, you, have, you, are, you, are, you are flowing like an eagle. An eagle. You see, I'm, I'm reminded of that animal that, that had the four faces. It also had the face of an eagle. It had the face of a human being. It has the face of an ox. Uh, the other face was what? Eh? A lion. Yes. Yes. So we, we can actually flow like that. When it comes to worship, yeah, you will find me like uh, an, uh, an eagle <laughs> flowing in heights. Yeah. But also when I get home, I can't continue to flow like an eagle. I have to have a face of a human so that my children can come closer and see that the daddy is a real human being. Because if I continue flowing in, this, in, the, in the skies there, it won't work well. So I, I must be able to adjust. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, you, you must be able to adjust as a leader. Yeah, you must be able. That's like, I like, I like 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 7. I like it so much. Can, can we read that? Can we read that before we go? I quoted it yesterday. Let me, let me, let's read it today. 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 7. Uh, 
Verse 6, let's read from verse 6 so that we can understand. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily. And you will show yourself to be a prophet with them. And you will be turned into another man. You see what the Spirit of God can do. This is an ordinary donkey, donkey, sex, sex, look, donkey man. The guy who was looking for donkeys. Yeah, he was just looking for donkeys. He was a head boy, a head boy or something, we can, we can call him. What he knew was just to look after donkeys. But when God, God was about to do something upon his life, when the anointing was poured on his head, and he begins to receive these words, these prophetic words, these prophetic declarations. He says, when the Spirit of God is going to come upon you mightily, and you will prophesy. Imagine, for the first time, the guy begins to prophesy. And you know, they, they spoke other, the other time, they say, is Saul also among the prophets? It was, they think Saul cannot do these things. There are some people, when they look at you, they think you, you can't flow in the spirit. But in this season, you will be a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will say something. Say, is so and so also among the prophets? Because you are going to prophesy. Because you are going to be used of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, he says, you will, be, you, you will prophesy with them. You will be turned to another man. Now, verse 7, I like it so much. It says, when these signs meet you, do whatever you find to be done. So, when, when the Spirit of God begins to move mightily, like last night, we must be aware, what is it that God wants us to do? What is it? What is the assignment? It says, do whatever you you find to be done. Why? Because God is with you. God is with you. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, God is with you. God is with you. Say, I see the presence of God upon you. <laughs> you are shining. <laughs> mm. So, you are saying, if you worship God on Sunday, what do you do on Monday? We must be able to be consistent. Consistent as, as leaders. There is a need to be consistent. The Bible speaks in, let's read that verse again. It says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, verse 1, no, 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 sorry, 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 I, I want 1 Corinthians, is it 1 Corinthians chapter 4, is it 1 Corinthians chapter 4? That I'm looking for. When, when you find it, you will see that, uh, especially verse 2, 1 Corinthians. It's not in my notes, so, yes, 4, verse 2. It says, moreover, it is, require, it was, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It's required, it's a requirement. When someone has been entrusted with some serious things of God, they are now required to be faithful. Faithfulness is a requirement. Say to a neighbor, neighbor, it's required. Yeah. Say it's required. It's required. This one says, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and is the stewards of the mysteries of God. That's what Paul is saying. Let, let a man so account of us. When you look at us, you must look at us as ministers of Christ. 
We are ministers of Christ and we, we carry the mysteries of God. Yeah, we are carrying. We are loaded. And in our loadedness, then he goes on to say, moreover, it is required. Hallelujah. It is required. It is required that a man or a steward be found faithful. A steward is someone who is entrusted. You have been entrusted by someone else's things. When we go into ministry, it's, a, it's an entrustment that God has done. God entrusts us. He, he hands these things in our hands. And he, it's required. Say it to neighbor. It's a requirement. Mm. It's a requirement. It's a, you see, when you hear like that, it's a tough word. It's required. No stories. When God begins to call us into ministry, this thing of stories must come to an end. This thing of drama, drama about it. You see, you hear the drama that someone does there. And they still continue preaching after the drama. No. This thing, the, the church of God must become church. There must, there must be a complete restoration of the true church of jesus christ and this can be done when god is calling leaders he is calling us he ministers to us he, we must understand why we are here hallelujah we have to understand we have to understand so character is we said character we said charisma is the giftedness is, is the things that we do is the preaching, the works, the miracles, the singing, the, all these things. We do them, we excel. You know, when you are manifesting your charisma, you, you excel in that thing. You do it very well. It's, that's what you can do. But that also needs to be balanced with character. Amen. Amen. It must be balanced. It must be balanced. That's why when the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 7 to 11, the Bible talks about the gifts of the Spirit. Nine. Nine. Say it number nine. Nine gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. And then it goes to Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. It then speaks about the fruit. I don't know, that one is, is a very special. When you read it now, it's not the fruits. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's like an, an orange. Eh? When you have an orange, you open it. You will find that it has some... I don't know what you can call it, eh? It is some segments, yes. You, you can actually take them out. You can actually share without breaking them. Share nicely. If you are 10, if it's a bigger orange, you can give someone, maybe you give someone the, 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 the self-control. You give someone the, <laughs> you see. So it's called the fruit of the spirit. If you read it properly, it's not the fruits. So it's a package. That must come through also when the Spirit of God is working in leaders. When the Spirit of God is working in the church, it also needs to come through for, for, the, for, for manifestation so that there is a proper balance by charisma and my character. Because the, 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 the fruit is now giving an emphasis on the character. And the gifts are giving an emphasis on the on the charisma. Amen. Amen. So we have to strike a balance. Say to neighbor, we have to strike a balance. We have to strike a balance. So mm -hmm. So you see, if you, you look at the church these days, there is too much. Uh, drama and gimmicks and everything. It's not a good thing. 
especially among the leaders. It's not a good thing. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you find a man of God or a woman of God, they, they, they are still preaching, but they are living like the world. And you don't understand. You get confused. But where are we going? What are we talking about? Amen. Amen, leaders. So we have to be serious about the God that we want to represent. Amen. You know, when he spoke to Moses, he says, Moses, go and tell the people that they must take three days. I'm coming. Three days, and God tell them to go and wash their clothes. <laughs> you read it in, in Exodus. He says, go and tell them everyone must wash their clothes. I can see those three something million people getting busy, or each one with their washing. Washing, washing basket. And that is not basically to say just to wash your clothes and, and leave yourself dirty. No. It's, it, God is saying, be, consecrate yourself. Because I'm coming. Consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we talk of leadership development and, and effective leadership, we also need to talk about this thing. And say, God have mercy upon us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, a lot of things are happening these days. So, but we, we don't flow with the, the, the currents. We must do like fish. We must go against the tide. Say to neighbor, neighbor, you have to go against the tide. Yes, when the tide, everything, people do anything they want to do, it's free for all. If, if I take someone's his wife and he, I will come here and preach, I do whatever. If I do that scandal, I will just come and preach. I will just continue. Business as usual. Continue do what? Doing the work of God. God must help us. Are we, are we hearing what we are talking about? God has to have mercy upon us. Amen. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you must understand me. I'm not saying we are perfect people. I want to explain that. We are not saying we are perfect. I'm not saying we are there already. But we are being made perfect. There's a difference between a perfect person and the person who is being made perfect. Someone who is being made perfect is someone who is in the process. And where you found me yesterday, you won't find me there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You won't find me there. If yesterday I was gossiping, I was doing this and that, I'm dealing with that thing. I'm, 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 I'm fighting that thing. The Bible says in your battle with sin, you have not done anything until you get to a point of shedding blood. You know that verse? You have not done anything until you get to a point of shedding blood. So you have to stand up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that purity can come back into the church. So that integrity will come back into the church. So that, you see, when, when you look at the early church, the Bible says the people of the world were scared to be part of them. They were, they were considered with great honor. They were not just, you know, lulazwad, you know. What, what do you call that in English? <laughs> Doctor, just to be taken for granted, to be taken for a ride. You know, when, when you don't live up to, you will be taken for a ride. They will see that you are not serious. Yes. Yes. And they will just think change is just a whiling of, of time. I always say, no, when we are here, we are not whiling up time. We are serious here. We are gaining ground. We are taking territories for Jesus. We don't while up time. 
Has it turned out a purchase? Hallelujah. So we are being made perfect. We are pushing for the best in Christ on a daily basis. That must be our attitude. That we are pushing for the best. Hallelujah. Amen. Pushing what? For the best. So can I show you some few scriptures? Can I show you some few scriptures? Before we go to the qualities. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 to 14. Philippians 3. Hear what Paul is saying. This man is, is, is a powerful, powerful role model, right? But listen to what he says. Philippians. And when he wrote the letter, the Philippians letter, he was in prison. We could say he was almost at the end of his ministry. Because when he speaks something in Timothy, he says, I know that my time of, of being poured out is almost close. And then he says, I, I fought the good fight. I, 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 I ran my, my, my race and I, I, finished, oh, I finished my course and I kept the faith. He's testified. That's his testimony when he comes to an end, almost coming to an end. So he's a man who was writing this letter in prison when he was almost at the end. But when you, you hear the language, it's not like a man who is saying, I've arrived. He's still... All right, let's read. He says, I do not mean to say that I have already achieved these things and that I have already reached perfection. Amen. Amen. But, <laughs> I like the but. I like the but. He says, but I press on to possess the perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed for me. This is a New Living Translation. I, I press, I, I press on to possess. There is a perfection that I'm seeing right there. There is a perfection that Jesus is calling me for that is right in front there. So what do I do? Each and every day, I'm pressing on. I'm pushing on. So it means where I was yesterday, you, you won't find me there. I'm pushing on. I'm pushing on. I'm pressing on. Hallelujah. In the matters of perfection. He says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I forget my past. If my past is loaded with my failures, I will bury it. Once I, I rectify my issues with the Lord, I have to be able to forgive even myself. One of the things that is a challenge uh, uh, man of God is that sometimes people fail to forgive themselves when God has forgiven them people has forgiven them they fail to forgive themselves they will be still saying but why did I do it why did... no but you, you are, you are... Wait, wait, what's happening it's a done deal already hallelujah amen so he says I forget the past even if the past is loaded with successes, those successes of the past may not be very useful in the present. They may not be. Because we need, we need to deal with what is we are facing now. David, if, the past can only be a testimony sometimes. Like David when he's quoting before Saul, he says, you know what, king, you don't know this thing. I have been alone in the bush. I met a lion. By the anointing and the presence of God, I dealt with it. I met a bear. I dealt with it. Goliath. Now, Goliath is going to be part of the package. Hallelujah. Amen. The next verse says, I, I press on to reach the end of the race 
and receive a heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Is this not powerful? Let's give a clap offering to Jesus. <laughs> Let me read another one. Another one is in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 31. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 31. What does Paul say? He says, I assure you by the pride which I have in you, in your fellowship and union with Christ Jesus, our Lord, that I die daily. And that's the amplified. He says, I die daily and I face death every day and I die to self. I die to self. Say to neighbor, we need to die to self. Every day. Every. The thing does not end. Until Jesus comes, we will be dying, dying. I, die, I, I died yesterday. I died tomorrow. I died today. <laughs> I keep dying. So it means when I'm dying, really, I'm improving. Amen. As a leader on the aspects of my character and my life. Amen. The other scripture is uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. And then we will go to Timoth now and just, we'll just go through these, uh, these qualities. We'll go through. Uh, it says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. Amen. Amen. Can you, can, let's take, take us back to verse 6. It says, as you have therefore received Christ as Lord, so walk ye in him. Amen. Walking, it means you are progressing in Christ. Amen. You are going forward. You are going forward. Walk here in him. Um, verse 7. Rooted and built up in him. You can see the, the continuum. Huh? The progression. Do you see that? That this person has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's a, a, a brand new baby, born again. But I'm not going to park and say, I'm born again. It's sorted, I'm fine. No, I, I need to walk in Christ. There is a walk in Christ. So in the walking now, then it goes on to say, rooted. Rooted. So if these things can happen to us as leaders, I'm telling you, we will shake this world for Jesus Christ. The Bible says rooted. Rooted. Amen. Then it goes on to say, built up in him. Built up in him. Rooted. It's not enough to be just rooted. You have to be built up. Let's welcome Pastor Nyati all the way from Gwanda. He's, he's my assistant. He's my assistant pastor. He's a wonderful son. Amen. Good to have him. He's, he's also a businessman. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God for having him. I think there is another one who is also coming. I, I think another one is, going to, is also going to come. So let's go back, rooted, built up in him, established. Hey, it's powerful, huh? We can actually have a sermon on this. Established in the faith as you have been taught. So you continue to be taught and you are abounding. You are abounding in thanksgiving. Verse 8, is there something in verse 8?
Yes. It says, be, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of man, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. So this is just encouraging us that when, when we get born again or when, we, when God calls us into leadership or when we have leadership responsibilities, we, we don't pack about our lives. We continue to push, push, to push on. We push on so that we are better each and every day. And then by so doing, we will have an impact for the kingdom of God. And we will be a great blessing in the ministry like this. This ministry is growing very, very fast. So the faster it grows, it's putting a demand on your life. <laughs> that you also need to do your things fast. Put your things in order very fast. Take your, your washing basket and, and take it, put it there. Start washing like those children of Israel. Because it's a fast thing. Don't have some backlogs. You, you have a backlog on this, on, on this one in your house there. A backlog at work. A backlog with your neighbors and so on. When the ministry is growing like this, Iowa, we don't want you to be left behind. You remember when Miriam complained about Moses' marriage. When Moses married that black woman, huh? complained. He says, is he the only one who hears from God? Huh? How can he marry such a woman? She didn't know that we are in the bigger picture of, 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 the, of the heavens. Amen. And God, the Bible says, and God heard it. The moment God heard it, I'm telling you, some things that we talk in the, under the carpets there, when God hears, and calls for a meeting the meeting will not go well it will end in tears <laughs> hallelujah it will end in tears so what happened there god says miriam aaron moses let's meet let's have a meeting and they came and and god tried to hear to listen what what was happening he says what is this thing that you what is this that you are talking do you don't know that Moses is, is, is my set man? You, you don't, what are you talking about? And then God, the Bible says God just, he left. God left. <laughs> the moment God left, leprous head hit Miriam. She was white with leprous. And Aaron started crying. I tell you, it ends in tears. He started crying. <laughs> and they're crying now. And also Moses started crying because he's, this, this is his sister. So, and then he went to God. God says, please, um, please, God, may you please just have mercy upon my sister, please. God says, hey, if a human being, if you, you, you do bad to a human being or to your father, does he not spit on your face and you stay like that for seven days? says, it must be seen by everyone. So seven days. <laughs> So they, and the Bible says Miriam was taken out of the camp and they had to wait for her for seven days. So there are certain people, as we go, uh, apostle, prophet, they, they will delay us if they delay to sort their issues. Because we, we don't want to leave them behind. So, but they will delay the progress. They will delay the, 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 the going forward. Because imagine if we left Miriam in the wilderness and we just go, it's not, it's, not, it's not a good thing. So may we organize ourselves. Get your washing basket. There, there is no need of a maid. When God says washing, that washing was not, you take your clothes, eh? Ah, ah. That one you have to wash for yourself. Each one with their own katundu. God is calling for that in the house in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, organize your things. Right, let's, let's go to one Timothy and talk about the, the qualities very fast 
Time is flying. <laughs> 1 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1. Let's just touch. I will just touch them because they, they are self-explanatory. So, but we need to hear what, this, what the Spirit of God is saying. So as we touch them, it's a good thing for you to open your spirit to the Spirit of God and you get yours. Amen. It, as we go through, even we read, you read through like that, if they're reading through, you get your, your portion. Then. <laughs> Say to neighbor, neighbor, be ready to get your portion. <laughs> right. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, This is a trustworthy saying. If anyone aspires to be an elder, this, this one, the other version says, If anyone aspires to be a bishop, huh? The other version says, which other versions do we have? Huh? This says elder. The, the other one says bishop. The other one says overseer. It means you have an oversight of people. You have some people that you, you are working with. I heard that saying that goes, people don't do what you expect they do what you inspect so if you expect them to do they won't do so there must be some inspection of some sort naturally people will not do amen say to a neighbor neighbor so it says it is true that anyone who desires to be a church official and this is nice <laughs> to be a church official i like this one <laughs> if you want to be a church official you you want to be to be something worthwhile it's a beautiful thing it's a powerful thing to want to be a church official in the divine kingdom baptist ministries amen are there people who want to be church officers here <laughs> lift your hand let's see so it's a the bible is saying this is a noble thing it's a beautiful thing it's a it's a worthwhile thing amen hallelujah Hallelujah. It's an honorable position. It's honorable. It's nice. It's powerful. What you are desiring is not a bad thing. In other words, God is saying, desire to do it. Don't wait, you know, to create some unnecessary spaces and gaps in the ministry when you are there. Rise up to the occasion. Rise up. Amen. And go for the, those things. Go those, those, those places. Go for those responsibilities. Take them up. It's a noble thing. It's a powerful thing. And then you see, see our verse 2 now. What does it say? In verse 2. That's why officials must be good, must be of good reputation. Then that, that, that one says, uh, that's why officials must be, must have a good reputation. Reputation, a good reputation. Say to neighbor, neighbor, you need to, ha I need to have a good reputation. Reputation. Yes, I need to have it. People must say something good about me. Amen. Amen. Yes. People must say something good about me. My version says, So an elder must be a man whose life is above reproach. Above. So number one, above reproach. We are talking about the qualities. Above board. Above reproach. So God is calling us to be above, above board. Above board. As a leader, must be above board. 
above reproach number one, you must be faithful. Anzi, he must be faithful to his wife. Faithful to his wife. If you have got a wife. <laughs> if, if you are a wife, it also speaks to you that you must be faithful to your husband. It's not a one-way bend, eh? It's a 50, it's all, all, both, hallelujah. Faithfulness, say to neighbor, faithfulness is required. We, we meet it again that we read in Corinthians. So there must be faithfulness. So now, wait, I don't know, now you, when you begin to read this and you go down up to verse 7, you begin to wonder, where does some of the people operate from? <laughs> where are you operating from? Yesterday, you dumped your wife for someone else. But you are holding the mic. And you are saying, I feel the power of God. Which power are you talking about? You see, these things, they must, the word of God is, it speaks on itself. We are not here to, to discredit people. We are here to stand on the word of God. We are here to receive instruction from the word of God. Hallelujah. He says, be faithful to your wife. Yeah, my wife is here. She's, she's working here in, in Blawai here. She was transferred. She works here. I'm in Gwanda. Yeah. She must not have a BP, a heart attack to say, hey, that man, this time he's talking this story. This time. The stories, they are not clear. You know, when you begin to have stories, eh, no, this one, I was canceling this one, and then they were crying, so I was uh, comforting them. <laughs> Aye! These drama things must end in the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Drama must end in the church of Jesus Christ. The church must be church. The world must be world. Full stop. You can't tell us what go. You see, do you know? Do you know? The Bible says the gift and the callings of God are without repentance. So sometimes, when God gives you a gift and you are a powerful worshiper, God gives you a gift and you are a prophet. God gives you a gift and you are an evangelist. God gives you a gift, you are, you are pastoral, apostolic. You can still function under the gift without the backup of heaven. I'm telling you. You can still function with that. Do you know when, when God rejected the soul, he still was still king. For some time. He was still sitting on the throne when he was rejected. And the anointing was coming through David. So let's not allow some of these gaps where you can be replaced when you are still there. Amen. Hallelujah. So, faithfulness in marriage, if you are married. You see, I preached another message in Gwanda sometimes, some years back. I think he was still there. I, I emphasized something like that. If you are married, you are married. If you are single, you are single. Full stop. There's no half half. There's no in between. If you are single, live like a single person. If you are married, live like her. I don't know. Are you getting that? It's a deep thing. Because there are certain single people whom you, I, I often sometimes you check their, the, what, status in the Facebook. They, they will say merit, merit, marriage, marital status. It will be, it's complicated. <laughs> How complicated is this complicated? Just tell us I'm single. Or tell us I'm married. And then live to that. And by the grace of God, God will find mercy for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know God can beautify you if you are single? God can beautify you and you stand 
God can do something about you. You can ask what happened to, to Sarah when she was about 90 years and they were going down to Egypt when there was hunger. The Bible says when Sarah and Abraham, they are walking, people did not see Abraham. They saw Sarah and they saw the beauty of an old lady. They saw marriage. They saw a sweet 16 beautified by the presence of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God can do it. That which he did to Sarah. Because you know those guys, when they saw Sarah and Abraham came, they said that we will have problems. We don't want to have problems. Who will take Sarah? Who, what, what? Let's just take her straight to the king so that all of us will lose. Because this lady is too beautiful. <laughs> it's too beautiful. We will lose all of us. It's better we all lose. So they take, they, they take her to the king and you know what God does? God that did a wealth transfer with, because of the beauty that he had put on Sarah. He did a wealth transfer. Immediately, this king saw Sarah. He says, no, let me pay Lobola faster, faster. Lobola was paid to Abraham. And then the Bible says, immediately the Lobola crossed the line. God looked from above. He opened an eye in the house of that king and says, you are a dead man. The woman that you have is someone else's wife. The man is a prophet. You have to go to him, he will pray for you and you will be healed. Otherwise, you are a dead man. Before he touched him, the transfer had happened. This happened in Genesis chapter 12. And then if you go to Genesis 13, in verse 2, you hear Abraham was very rich. One time, <laughs> because of that beauty that God can do. So it's never late for you in Jesus' name. Marriage is going to come for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you are single, you are. If you are married, you are. Full stop. Let's put a full stop there. Say to neighbor, we put a full stop there. <laughs> now let's push, let's push, let's push. We are in verse what? All right, verse two. He must exercise self control. So, number three, self control. Say to neighbor, number three, self control. Self control. You exercise self control. And number four, live wisely you live wisely if you are a leader you must live wise, wisely and number five sorry 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 live wisely say to neighbor live wisely mm. and number six you you have to okay this one then put a good reputation and then he must uh and then it goes on it says he must enjoy having guests in his house you must be hospitable. If you are going to be a leader, you have to be hospitable. I've seen all this time at our house, is there's no time. I've said, ah, but you know, I want to try to live with my kids only. But this, I fail. <laughs> I fail. I, I have people that will have needs once in a while. Hospitable. Amen. Hallelujah. You must be hospitable. Say to your neighbor, hospitality. <laughs> Enjoy guests. And, uh, also, and then it brings this one. This one is, is more of a, a function. It's not a, um, a quality. It's a function. It says you must be able to teach. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, you must be also able to teach. Teach others. Amen. You must be able to teach. Verse 3 says he must not be a heavy drinker. He must not be a heavy drinker or be a violent. When I, that heavy drinker, it's just straightforward. You must not be a drinker. Me, yeah, yeah. Because someone will say, yeah, but it's soft a little bit. It's soft. You know, I will not be a heavy drinker. But let me tell you something. Me, I used to, I, well, before I got born again, I was a drinker. 
And I, the, the purpose for drinking is to be drunk. That's true. I'm telling you, I, 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 was, I was one of the champions in drinking. You see, when you see me, you must see a testimony. You must see the grace of God, I'm telling you. So I know, I know, even when you are in the raw areas and they are drinking that beer there, that brood in the raw areas, when they tell you the beer is nice, it's not nice in the la. Beer is not nice. Let's, let's face the fact. You have a lot of questions. How many? No, the none of it is the drunken, the ability for you to get drunk. Can I not ludaga? You go to a high olugas zvanuban lumnand. You understand? Yeah. Not to good corner, it's nice here. No, it's not nice that thing. When you drink it, it's not nice. <laughs> but people drink it. Even some they drink, we are going to. You see the face. It's drinking. <laughs> it's forcing some poison. <laughs> God have mercy upon us. So, this drinking thing. So, now if you talk about drinking now, for me, who was a, a drunkard, and you want me to drink Bijan, so you want to take me back. Do you see that? Huh? You, you want to take me back, definitely. You want to kill me. Because the moment I test and then the memories come and so on, so you want to take me back. But we are not of them that draw back and perish in the name of Jesus. They just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. So you must not be found there. I heard in certain countries, after a, a powerful service, they go to the, in certain countries, they go to the, to the what, what, yeah, in the caves and so on, and they drink. They drink. Certain guys, I don't want to mention because I'm on the thing. See, but they, that's what they do. Yeah, they, they drink and they fellowship. And then they come here. No, not here in Africa. Not here in Zim. Not here in this divine kingdom, Baptist. Not in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Uh uh. Say to neighbor, uh uh. Then he says he must be gentle, he must not be quarrelsome. Not a lover of money. Say to your neighbor, not a lover of money. Come on, say to your neighbor, neighbor, not a lover of money. You see, there's a difference between um, the love of money huh? and, and some aspirations to, to have, to work hard and have money. The Bible says money in Ecclesiastes answers everything. So money on itself is not the root. The Bible is clear in Timothy. It did not say the man, money is the root of all evil. Uh, the love, that craving, it must die in us in the name of Jesus Christ for us to be powerful leaders. Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 4 it says he must manage his own family well. Manage your own family well. Say to neighbor, neighbor. We'll see what the Bible is talking about. It says, How can you take care of God's church if you can't take care of your own family? So, our first church is our families. That's our first church. Amen. The actual priority, biblical priority, is God, family, ministry, and others. You can write it down. It's okay. If you want to do research, you can do. It's fine. You are free to do that. But let me repeat it. The proper priority is God, family, ministry or church and others 
So it means we need to reorganize our priorities if we are going to be powerful leaders. Because there are some people who will be so, so busy with others neglecting their family. And then the Bible says, how can you be leading the church when you can't lead your own house? So we need to sort our priorities. Amen. Say to neighbor, neighbor, priorities right. Put your priorities. Let's put our priorities right. Amen. And then it goes on to say, verse 5, it says, if a man cannot manage, oh, okay. If a man cannot manage his, how can he take care of the church? Verse 6, an, an elder must not be a new believer. A new believer. You see that? Huh? You have to, we must give you some grace. Actually, you see, this does not deny you from functioning. Function is more important than position. The moment you get born again, start functioning. Do all that you can. But when you get appointed now, that one then comes. It says you must not be a new belief, a recent belief. And Amen. So, but don't wait and say, I'm still a new believer. So, so, uh uh, start functioning. If you can preach, go preach. Go out there and preach. We, before I became a pastor, we used to go, we used to preach, uh, we used to make trips to go to Zambia by train, deliberately, so that we can preach in the train. I'm telling you. But when we started, we didn't know how to do it. The Spirit of God was just pushing us to do the things. We didn't know. How to, so we come immediately, we finish, we get into the train and people are drinking, they are making noise. We are preaching here and people are making noise, we are preaching. Until the Holy Ghost helped us and said, no, these people, just give them time. Around one-ish, one-ish, everyone will be seated nicely. They will be tired. <laughs> the drunkenness and everything will be over. So you just go to the front. You know, the train is like how we are sitting. It's like this. So you go one by one, you know, truck by truck and so on. So you sit, stand in front and, and I, you say, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. Everyone wakes up and you start preaching. you preaching and you lead them to accept Jesus. That's what we used to do. But we had no post until relatives began to call us pastor, pastor, pastor and so on. So don't wait and say, I'm a new believer, so I can't do responsibility. Amen? Is that clear? Are we getting something? Right. Uh, yes. Verse 7 says, also people outside the church must speak well of you. People outside the church. Say to neighbor, people outside the church. Konapo, man. Konapo. People outside the church, they must speak well of you. So that you will not, you will not be a disgrace and fall into the devil's trap. So people outside the church, they must, what are they saying about us? Even if they are saying something, let's go like the children of Israel, organize your washing, washing basket, Katundu, put it there, wash those things. Wash, sort them out, sort them out, sort them out, sort them out. So that we can be able to do what God wants us to do in this season. Amen. Now let's, let's read other, one or two portions. And then I think I can, I, can, I can try to... I think we, we read something in Exodus 18 verse 21. And can we read it again? Exodus 18, 21. Exodus 18, 21. And we read something also in Acts chapter 6 when deacons were appointed. So these things, you can see how they, the God is not quiet in terms of quality or qualifications when leadership is being called out. He says something. Hmm? 
Ask your neighbor, are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Uh, whenever leadership is mentioned somehow, somehow, then God begins to say something about the qualifications. There in Exodus, God was saying, select those servant, but don't just pick anything. <laughs> we want quality. God says we want quality because we want to do something special. We want to do something for the heavens. So, but consider also what type of people are they going to be. If they don't have those qualities, tell them to work on them. So in other words, we have got something to work on. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, we have something to work on. Mm. So let's read it. It says, but select from all the people some capable. And it says, and you will need to appoint some com competent leaders. Competent leaders. Say to your neighbor, competent competent. Be competent. When you, when you are given a responsibility, maybe you are an usher, be competent. Do it well. Do it with power. May the Lord, may the anointing of the Spirit of God flow in that area. If, if you are going to be a, a, a coordinator, coordinate with anointing, with competence. Hallelujah. Don't just do haphazard. Yeah. I've seen sometimes, uh, prophet, in church is where people lower standards I don't know the same person who will go to work on Monday to Friday when Sunday come they lower standard I don't know have you seen it yeah. they don't get they, they don't have a tendency of getting late to work when they are going for work they don't, they don't if they get late, it's, it's maybe there was some challenge, but they don't like it. But when it comes to church, ah. <laughs> the same person is the same person who is behaving in different ways. So we, we fail to understand you now. Are you? Are you? Very, very serious. Are you taking this serious or you are just taking it for granted? Even the heavens will say, oh, all right. So, let's put that verse. It says, a point that they will be competent. Say, I want to be competent this season. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two, it says, who respect Hey, this version is very powerful. Ha! He says, who respect God? Ha! <laughs> I need to, to, to have it. This one, I need to have this version. It's very powerful. He said, leaders who respect God. Do you know someone who respect God? Whether people are there or not, they are the same. They will still do what they can do when people are there. They will do when, when people are not there. They respect God. May God raise leaders who respect God. Who respect God. We heard how Moses was becoming low, low and was beginning to be disrespectful to God. We heard it. It's very easy. It can happen. And we can do. They say action speaks louder than words. Amen. Action speaks louder. My actions can reflect, can, it can make some impression whether I am res respecting God or I am not. So leaders who respect God, number two. Number three, leaders who are trustworthy. Trustworthy. And leaders who are honest. Mm. And then God says, now, right, how are they going to work? Some, they will be for, for tens. They will manage tens, their capacity. Some, they will manage fifties. Some hundreds, some thousands. I want to be a leader of thousands. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to lead thousands. Before Jesus comes, I want to lead the thousands in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, let's read Acts chapter 6 and then this one. I don't know if, if we can even uh, give an opportunity if people want to put some inputs. It's fine. Acts chapter 6 verse uh, Acts chapter 6 so we are talking about qualities they are just self explanatory may God have mercy upon us Amen verse 3 I think verse 3 verse 3 says what it says, my friends, choose seven who are respected. <laughs> huh? Do you hear that vision? It's nice. It's powerful. It says, choose, choose seven men who are respected. They must be respected. But respect, you cannot bulldoze people to respect you. You own, you, you earn it. And? Yeah, you earn it. And it may come after a process. After people have, are convinced about you, they will respect you. So people who respect, who are wise, filled with God's spirit, we will put them in charge of these things. So these are the type of people that were supposed to be put in charge. It was not just a, a go there, gather people, just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then put them to be in charge. It was not like that. Even I'm reminded, let's read something in Daniel, Daniel chapter 6. Daniel 6. Are you getting something? So these are the, the things that we are encouraging each other, you and me, so that we can have some work to do. We can have some work to do, working on ourselves. The Bible says, work your salvation with fear and tre trembling. You know, the, 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 the top verse says, it speaks about that salvation, we are born again, it's not for ourselves and so on and so on, the way it speaks. And then down the next verse says, work out your own salvation. When you are born again, you can't say, it was by grace, so it will go by grace. Ah, you then have a responsibility to work. I have a responsibility to work so that we can have a powerful church Daniel chapter 6 mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 6 verse 1 we can read just from verse 1 from verse 1 Daniel 6 I don't know what that vision is going to give us. There has divided his, his kingdom into 120 states and placed a governor in charge of each one. Right, let's go. He placed a governor in charge of each one in order to make sure that his government was run properly. Hey. <laughs> the government needed to be run properly. You see, this was a heathen king. He was a heathen king. He says, Darius put three of other officials in charge of the governors. One of these officials was Daniel. The King James Version, I like it. It says, this Daniel. You know, when the Bible talks about Daniel, you can, uh, you, 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 you can just be shocked. It says, this Daniel. This Daniel. So let's, and, and say, you, yeah, Ah, that's not it. That's not it. All right. Um, Daniel huh? six. Where is it now? Can you bring it? Bring it, please. Verse and uh, uh, over this uh, and over. Uh, these presidents of whom Daniel was first. Say it in but Daniel was first. Uh, it was not third. There were three presidents. 
But Daniel was first in, in a foreign land, in the diaspora. In the diaspora. Against all odds. Daniel was first. Same to neighbor, I'm going to be first. Mm, that the princes might give accounts unto, unto, unto them and the king should have no damage. Let's go down. He, the, the king should not have any damage. Or the other version speaks about that the, the kingdom should not suffer loss. Do you know when we just do haphazard uh, things as a ministry, we suffer, we suffer loss. When we just place everyone, everywhere, everyone, everywhere, we will suffer loss. So may God help us to quickly raise men and women who will stand for it in Jesus' name. Quickly raise men and women who are saying, I'm, I'm giving myself wholly. I'm giving myself wholly. There's a scripture that I would want to read that talks about giving ourselves wholly in Timothy. So I will, I will need that scripture. So let's, let's push. And this Daniel was preferred. <laughs> Say to neighbor, I am going to be preferred. <laughs> I am receiving preference from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm going to receive preference from heaven. I'm not only going to receive preference from heaven, I'm going to receive preference from the men of God. The men and the women of God. They will prefer me. So, you guys, let me encourage you. When you see someone being preferred, it's not about favor. There is something, they are upping their game. Let's up our games so that it will be easy to be preferred. Hallelujah. Let's up our game. Let's up our game. Because, you see, they, they say, uh, birds of the same feather flock together. So if I see this bed is, is having a black feather and we have white, all of us, ah, I will not prefer it. Ah, I will not prefer it. What can I do? Ah, I will not. This Daniel was preferred about the presidents and the princes because, ah, oh my God, ah, because he had an excellent spirit. May the spirit of excellence wake upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. An excellent spirit. May you excel in all that you do. You know, when the Bible speaks about the, the excellent spirit, I can remember this guy who was called King Solomon. The Bible speaks when, 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 the, when it was head. Do you know excellence attracts excellence? Excellence attracts resources. It attracts resources. The Bible says how the king, the, the king Solomon placed these things by wisdom. The Bible begins to describe even the way he put the steps into the sanctuary. The way the, those who were serving tables, the way they were dressed. Eh? Those who were administering tables, the way the food was placed on the on the on the tables, everything that was there. The Bible says when the Queen of Sheba came and she saw that she had a report that she had received in terms of how Solomon was excelling, she had a certain report. But when she came and she saw on her own, the Bible says she her spirit left her. She passed out. So, Kufa. Ni excellence. Kuti di. Hallelujah. And after that, when she woke up, she did not just go di. She woke up and she began to deliver some gold. She began to deliver some resources. She began to live abundance in that place. Excellence attracts resources. We want to challenge excellence in this ministry. May God raise standards of excellence in this ministry. How things are going to be done. How things are going to be done. May there be a difference. May there be a mark in the way we are going to do ministry. 
the way we will receive our guests the way we will set our things may god raise an a spirit of excellence may it be so powerful upon this ministry in the mighty name of jesus may excellence take place in your houses may ex excellence take place if you are running a company may excellence dominate upon you in the name of jesus christ may you be irresistible because of the spirit of excellence excellence is powerful you can't substitute excellence for anything you can't you can't the, this solomon guy he had his own problems but when it comes to excellence he was too much he was too much when if, if we had time we were going to read how the bible explains it just the steps only the table the the way the servants huh, i don't know all right let's what do we do let's 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 read there and i think i've got some bit some bit eh? where is my time keep i've got some bit eh? so i think eh, in that bit i want us to read that one Amen. i want us to read so that we can be totally convinced but let's let's read that it says because of an excellent spirit that was in him the king thought to set him over the whole realm over the whole the king says no 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 i have not seen such quality i have not seen such a man how can i waste such a man how can i leave this man just go with ordinary men this man is a unique man this man carries a spirit of excellence this man will change the kingdom this man will beautify this kingdom i need to put him to be above the whole realm tell him, oh my god above the whole realm the spirit of say to your neighbor the spirit of excellence the spirit of excellence not not you see the, there is a scripture in job job 13 13 you know what it says huh? put it there can you put the job 13 13 there are some people who are who are not job 13 13 it says hold your peace let me alone and that i may speak and let come on me what will you see i think you can change the version <laughs> it's chawia chawia if i can interpret it in shona can someone can you change it? we say hold your peace and let me and let me speak let come on me what may are you sure that anything that wants to come upon you even dead let it come on you huh? even the the, the 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 junk things let them come on no you must determine you must be determined in your heart the bible speaks about daniel in chapter, daniel chapter 1 verse 8 it says so daniel purposed in his heart he was a man of purpose he purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the things of Babylon. So, say to me by spirit of excellence, must reign in this house. Hallelujah. You know, they say, someone says, excellence is doing the best with what you have. Doing the best with? Uh, it's not about you know you are going to buy expensive things and what what and you'll be off budget and you'll be in, in credits ah what are you doing so far with what you have if you have got two shirts and two trousers <laughs> hallelujah yeah let's see and actually excellence is a law of promotion I call it a law of promotion. You know what Jesus says in Luke? He says, if you are faithful with the little, you will be entrusted with much. Hmm? If you are faithful with someone else's things, 
you will be entrusted with your own. Amen. I, I, he knows. I, I, we rented in Gwanda. We rented a lot of houses. But wherever we were staying, we were not coming out because the landlord was angry with us. We were coming out because we were getting where God was taking us to better places. The landlords, most of them, they will not come to their, their house. They will just talk maybe after two months or whatever. We were trying our best to keep that house as if it was ours. And now I can declare to you that God has given us a house. Uh, it's not only a house. It's, 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 it's a beautiful house. Yeah. Compared to, to where we are coming from. We are coming from nothingness. Yeah. We have a beautiful house. And you know, before that house was finished, an NGO wanted it. They said, we want to rent this house. When we, we roofed it, we plastered inside and outside. We put windows. It was already beautiful. And a spirit of excellence. It was, you can ask him, you will tell him. Amen. And they came, they said, we want to rent this house. I said, ah, how can you rent? It's not finished and so on. It will give me too much work. They said, please, in front of this, work the house. As I'm talking right now, I'm a landlord. <laughs> oh, yes. Amen. It's beautiful. Using those resources that God was granting us. So faith, uh, excellence, doing the best with what you have. Now ask your neighbor. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, let's, let's go to, oh, look at that verse. Anyone who can, can please, uh, can you check for my, I think it's in what? That is Solomon's thing. Let's, someone check for it quickly. As we read this one, then we will go there. Um, anyone who can be trusted in little matters can also be trusted in important matters. Hey! Hi! Hey. Ah. You, you hear that? Huh? Ask your neighbor and say, are you hearing this? <laughs> anyone who can be trusted on little matters can also be trusted in important matters. But anyone who is dishonest on little matters will be dishonest on important matters. So, what does this mean? It means that we are being tested with what we have. And can I ask a question? Um, do you think you are passing the test? You see, because you did not know all along that you are being tested. But I have come to present to you that whatever level you are, whatever things you have, you were under a test. Now, if you are to mark for yourself, you don't need someone to mark for you. Just mark for yourself. Do you think you will pass? Give a high five to your neighbor. <laughs> This one you, you must give her. <laughs> yeah, you sing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May God help us. May God help us. So, this is what the Spirit of God is challenging us. Let's take, you see, God is already opening serious doors for this ministry. Serious doors. But there is need for a resourceful men and women who will stand along the men and the women of God and cause things to happen. And these are the things that the Spirit of God is saying. If we can underline these things in our spirit and begin to work out, work them out, work them, we, will, we are destined for greatness. We will go... We will go to any nation in this world. We will go to any nation in this world. 
Because God is already opening those doors. Amen. I sometimes think about uh, Baba Guti, that great apostle. He opens churches where you can't even understand the language. But the churches will open there. And that grace is in this house. Ha! It's in this house. Where churches will be opened without, I mean, like I, I wanted to, to say in Acts chapter 6, 12, like the iron gate. The Bible says when Peter was taken by an angel out of the prison, he, he passed the first guard, the second guard, all these guys, they were sleeping. The heavens caused the deep sleep upon the guards. Because God was up to something with Peter. So when they slept and slept, now these guys don't think they were not wise. They were very wise. They knew if the first guard will miss you, the second one will catch you. If the second one, will, the third one will catch you. But if all this fail, the iron gate will stop you. But guess what happened with the iron gate? The Bible says when, they, when Peter was coming with an angel, the iron gate opened on its own accord. So don't think when you see these doors in, in, the, in, the, in the offices opening on their own, they see it from the Bible. Amen. And they begin to plan how can it be done. Even if they don't want to follow the Bible, they see, they follow. On his own accord, they arrive and the door, the iron gate, the one that we're saying, this one, they will not pass. And God is doing it in this ministry. Whatever iron gate in any city is going to open on its own in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And you will get there and plant churches and raise vibrant Christ-centered churches. Hallelujah. And the spirit of excellence will be manifested in Jesus' name. Now let's go to that one. Let's go to wisdom. Did you get it? Yes, let's get it and then we, we see what we can do. The wisdom thing. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 10. <laughs> I, uh, what does verse 1 say? Verse 1. Now, let's read that. The queen of Sheba heard how famous Solomon was. So she went to Jerusalem to test him with difficult questions. <laughs> to test him with difficult questions. Did I say you were under a test? Yeah. I said, Dada, do, have you read Genesis 22? When God was calling Abraham to say, take Isaac, let's go to Moria. Let's put him on the altar. Let's finish this problem. Because the Bible speaks about God and Abraham being friends. Those guys are friends, huh? That's, the Bible says Abraham was a friend of God, huh? But when Isaac came, the friendship started to, to divert. The heart of Abraham started to divert from God to Isaac. And God says, ah... Don't you know, my friend, that I'm very jealous. So now, let's, let me show you what I can do. Can you please come with that boy? So sometimes may God help us. Certain things that we begin to allow our hearts to be drawn to. Too much. More than God. Be careful. Be careful, because God will want it. <laughs> God will, you see, it will cause God's attention to say, but what is this thing that, that is disturbing me? All along we were relating very well. I'm talking to leaders here. Amen. Yes, I, we were doing very well. But this thing now is taking everything of his time. I can't see him anymore, my friend. My friend Abra. Oh, by the way, it's Isaac. So let's take Isaac, and I don't want to take him from him. Uh -uh. I want him to bring. And God says, you know, do, do you know what God did? God says, I take him, this guy, to a mountain that I will show you. It was not, you know, when God is giving instructions, he does not write a composition. No, he gives you line upon line. 
You, 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 precept upon precept. You, you follow this one and then the next one comes. Follow this one, obey this one, the next one comes. So God says, let's go. The, the guy, what? three days, imagine you go three days knowing that the boy is going. Your heart will be settled. Your heart will be fine, I'm telling you. You will have settled your matters. So let's not take these things that far where we will be able to go three days with this thing when God is demanding it. I think you are catching something. Hallelujah. And it happened like that. And, but when you read now, if you read verse 1, it's very surprising. God says, in verse 1, it says in Genesis chapter 22 verse 1, it says, and God tested Abraham. But to Abraham, it was a reality. The ones who are hearing now it was a test is us. I did not hear. <laughs> the ones who are hearing that this thing was not that much serious. God wanted to see. <laughs> so it was a test. It was a test. And Abraham passed the test. So I'm coming back to the test thing. I don't know why. Is someone passing the test here? Hmm? Someone needs to pass the test. There are some things that God has entrusted with you. Maybe God has given you just to take over ushering and do ushering. Are you passing that test? Or you are just saying, ah, ushering is ushering. If they had said preach, uh, I was going to do diligence. <laughs> God, God, let's do diligence, man. In those small, ushering actually is not small. I realize that ushering is the, is the most important ministry in the ministry. Because if, if an usher, let's say an usher is possessed and, and everyone who comes, they are, they are touching them. I'm telling you, the service will be heavy. I'm telling you, the, and the people who are touched by that usher, they won't come back. Because they have they possessed and the spirit is a spirit of rejection. <laughs> they are there. Yo, so ushering is very important. Amen. So there's no nothing that is small in the church. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Queen of Sheba, when the Queen of Sheba heard about this man, she came and wanted to ask difficult questions. Let's go down and then we try to round it up. She took along, along several of her officials and she loaded her camels with gifts of spices, of jewels, of gold. When she arrived, she, she and Solomon talked about everything she could think of. He answered every question, no matter how difficult it was. Ha, may God give us wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, put your head on your hand and say, God, grant me wisdom. I need to function as a leader with wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. I need to function. I need wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in James chapter 1, if any man lacketh wisdom, let him ask from above because God gives liberally without shedding. He gives. He says any man. It's an open check. And look what wisdom can do. He answered every question. Let's go to verse 4. <clears throat> the queen was amazed at Solomon's wisdom. She was breathless when she saw his palace. Now, that one we will need to read it from another version. But let's, let's just read it. Um, the food on his table. Now, I want you to, to see the things that are mentioned. Just, it says, the food. This is a spirit of excellence working. Just the food. Hey, we, we, we enjoyed the food. I don't know those people who are, who are in hospitality who are serving us. The food is something else. May, may God bless you. <laughs> the food is, is powerful. It's, it's powerful. You see, it's also there in the Bible. Food on, the, on his table, his officials, his servants in their uniforms. Huh? The people who served his food, 
The sacrifices he offered uh, at the Lord's temple. Can you put this, if you have amplified, can you put amplified a bit of, of these two verses? Let's see. When the queen of Sheba, okay, when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and skill, the house he had built. Say to neighbor the house. You know, sometimes, I, I don't know, but let me, don't be offended when I say something. You know, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I like to check people. I've seen some people, they build a house that is so, so poorly built. And after some years, they built a very nice jural. <laughs> but it does not tally, man. The jura will, will be so nice. But the house inside, hi, man. It doesn't tally. You, 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 I'm, I'm thinking, I'm sure you can, you can also check that. I don't know what, how people, how we think. Hey, Jurao. It's better when you think about putting up a Jurao that is up to scratch. Then destroy that house and start afresh. And do something that matches, that is above the Jurao. Because you don't normally play around the jural. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the Bible says the house. Say to neighbor the house. Mm. The spirit of excellence. The way he built the house. Number two. What else? The food on the table. The sitting of his officials. The sitting. The sitting, hmm? the standing at attention of his servants. <laughs> Aye. Their apparel, say to neighbor, apparel. Aye. His cupbearers, his descent, now this puts it now, his descent by which he went up to the house of the Lord. The steps of burnt offerings and sacrifices. She was breathless and overcome. God are going to be breathless and overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. The way we are going to do things. So let's, let's go further. She said to the king, It was true. It was a true report I had in my own land of your acts and your sayings of wisdom. It was a true report, and, but let's go further. I did not believe it until I came and my eyes had seen. Behold, the half was not told to me. <laughs> The half was not told to me. Hallelujah. You have added wisdom and goodness and exceeding goodness exceeding the fame I had. Amen. Verse 8 Verse 8 Verse number 8 Oh, thank you Lord Jesus. Happy are your men. When, when the spirit of excellence is, is, is moving, people will be happy. They'll just be happy. Can you tell me of some people who don't like nice things? Huh? You can tell me of some people who don't like nice things. Uh, the, during the years of Greyhound and Intercab in Gwanda, <coughs> There was a garage that was built. So it was built a little bit outside town before you enter Gwanda. So I told people, I said, you will see Greyhound and Indakeb will change where they want to, to park their garages. 
They will not. Uh, anyway. So, <clears throat> and for real, when that garage was finished, they changed. And they were now there. But I'm sure you have heard huh? yeah. what I'm saying. So, excellence attracts excellence. Excellence attracts resources. Powerful resources. That's happy. Happy are your servants who stand continually before you hearing your wisdom. Let's read further and then we, we round it up. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord, the God who delighted in, your, in you and set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, he made you king to execute justice and righteousness. And she gave the king. <laughs> Say to neighbor, and she gave. Yeah, she gave now. Prophet, excellence attracts resources. Besides the anointing and the favor of God, excellence will do it. Amen. I'm not sure that Solomon had an anointing because of some things that he used to do <laughs> with women. But Solomon had wisdom. Too much. Amen. Hallelujah. And the king they, they gave 120 talents of gold and of spices of every great store and precious stones. Never again, never again came such abundance of spices as these the queen of Sheba gave to Solomon. Never again. Huh. So she was too loaded. Just to come and surrender in the feet of excellence. May God do it for us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Verse 11, what does it say? The navy also of Haram brought uh, from Ophi gold and great plenty of Almag, wood and precious stones. Verse 12, of the Almag wood, the king made pillars and so on and so on and so on. But we can see this, may God help us, may God minister to our spirits that when we become leaders in this ministry and wherever we are, we will, uh, we will release and express quality, 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 amen. And the quality is there for, quality is there of, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. So we are grateful to God. So for, for, for this session, I felt I can, I, can, I can round it up here. I can round it up here. Can we give a clap offering? A clap offering. But